What's up, peeps? Today is finally the day I've been promising and you've been waiting for. I'm doing a restoration of this six drawer solid maple dresser from Crawford Furniture. This is my first commission dresser and I can't wait to share all the bumps and hiccups that I experienced along the way because she may have started out super rough, but the final result is so worth every minute I spent fixing her up. This will be a longer video than I normally share because there were a lot of steps and I think the info might be useful to someone just getting started at making repairs like this. You can see I have to contend with missing corners, mismatched hardware, separating wood, loose dovetail joinery, a failing finish, and more. I'll fix all of these issues in today's video. So, enough blabbering about it. I'm Jen, this is Copper Cactus DIY, let's get started. While I vacuum out this dresser, I thought you might like to know a bit about this dresser. Crawford Furniture was based out of Jamestown, New York, and they opened in 1883. The company was known for casual, solid wood furniture that was made by hand. This company closed for good in 2012. Even though attempts were made to keep the company running, they just couldn't hang on through the recession. I'm honored to have a chance to work on a piece of history like this. My client mentioned having this for about 22 years and it was acquired with some of the damage to the drawers as well as mismatched hardware, which was easily removed. I got everything ready for the most important step, cleaning. I grabbed a container of warm water and palm olive dish soap. It's a great degreasing soap and I wanted to make sure this got an extra heavy scrubbing because of the damage to the finish. It might be tempting to skip cleaning and go right to sanding. I get it, that's faster, but you risk pushing grime into your wood grain with your sander, which could impact your final finish. Not to mention, sandpaper is already a quick use consumable item in my shop. So if I can save my sandpaper from gunking up quicker, it means more grit doing what it should do to remove the finish, meaning a cost and planet savings. Score! Once I got it clean, I needed to remove all the soap residue. I went over the entire dresser twice with clean water, once off camera, then I left it to dry, which didn't take all that long here in Phoenix, Arizona. I forgot to film everything, but this is the time I started making some repairs, like reattaching this drawer rail. and prying off the feet to assess all the split wood. On some of the bigger cracks, I added some thin, skinny layers of maple veneer to act as splines. You'll see me chisel those out in a minute. I added a generous amount of Gorilla Wood Glue and clamped from multiple angles to keep things level and plumb. I did the other three feet off camera. 
I was watching Taryn over at Elegant Upgrades a few weeks ago, and she reminded me to pull out my Purdy Carbide Scraper to give it a try. I picked this tool up specifically to use on pieces like this. Solid wood pieces with a nice light finish that will scrape off easy. As you can see, this thing works great, and combined with my Quinn Multiblade, it made for some great montage footage. The scraping went relatively quickly, though I did it over different days because of other repairs. So then it was time to get sanding. I started on the curved areas with hand sanding, and I used these sheets which I definitely like more for doing this kind of work than using them with my orbital. I started with 80 grit, then I graduated to 120 and finally 240, which I did off camera. One of the other repairs I mentioned was adding splines to the splits in some of the wood. That worked like a charm, and I'm sorry I didn't get it on camera. But as you can see, I left the edges slightly proud of the surface on all faces. That way I could chisel down the excess wood and glue before sanding everything to flat. I sanded down some overspray from the original factory finish, and I chiseled off some small spots where glue had seeped out during assembly. It wasn't impacting the drawers or anything, but I feel like it looks more professional with that removed. Most of my prep time on this piece was spent sanding. I wanted to get through the finish as well as a very thin top layer of the grain quickly, so I used 80 grit to start. I did that because of the staining, scratches, and other marks. If I could remove and smooth things out without chemicals, that's always what I prefer. If you saw my paint hacks video a few weeks ago, then you saw me add this plumbing coupler to my vacuum and sander. It worked great until this moment. I actually took it off because I felt a quick shock in my hand when I grazed past the metal. Yeah, 
I don't screw around with electricity, and I didn't want to risk a spark inside my vacuum. Sawdust could catch fire really quickly, so I figured better safe than sorry. I'll look into a more pro dust collection at some point, but for now, I've stopped using that hack. I finished up wearing a respirator and changed sanding discs as needed. I used a mix of sawdust from sanding the raw wood and some PVA glue to fill small cracks in the top. I pushed it in with my finger, then scraped the excess back with a Japan scraper. For the biggest cracks on top, I used wood glue and splines like I did on the sides. While all that dried, I started on the drawer corners. I started out using an awl to just get a hole started for the pilot holes. I grabbed a, I grabbed a drill bit that is just eensy weensy slightly bigger than the toothpick width and I put some tape exactly where I want this to stop drilling in and I'm going to do two. Okay, I've got the toothpicks that I'm going to try to use, but I only want to use the real thick part, so I'm just going to use my snippers to like start a cut and just bend them off. Alright, let's do a dry fit before I actually get glue in there. That's a pretty good fit actually. That looks good. Now that I know these fit, I'm going to put some glue in there. I'm going to leave them whole uh, until it is fully set. That way then I can kind of come in with the uh, scrap piece and get a feel for where they're actually going to need to stop when I drill the holes in the scrap piece too and exactly where the holes are going to need to be once these are fully set in. But I'm going to actually leave that to go uh, to cure overnight. On the other damaged corner, I didn't need as much structure, so instead I glued toothpicks directly to the surface. And PVA glue is pretty strong, so I trust this to last. Then I used a stainable wood filler to shape the rest of this corner. I rounded it out well above the surface and out past the edges, that way I'd have something for sanding. This tape-coated popsicle stick kept the fill from slumping as it dried. I used our Black & Decker jigsaw with a wood blade and cut the piece for the corner. Then I clamped the piece to my worktop and sanded by hand to get down to the line. And then my battery died. Okay, so my camera died. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I just drilled two holes. What I did was I took the piece and I put it on the front edge so that it would touch like basically where I wanted it to touch. Marked on the back the position of the toothpicks and then where I was going to cut those toothpicks off. So you can see that will be like this line here, this little center line, these little center lines here. So I'm going to then just line this back up again where it was or where it will be, I should say. Once I actually do this, I'm going to just take my pliers again come in on the toothpick where I put the mark. Okay. Basically just clamp it in. Okay, that went flying faster and farther than I wanted it to. <laughs> and I'm just gonna line it up, make sure it's still lined up. hold it. Just snap it. Now, let's dry fit. <laughs> this is me right now. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, baby. It's not perfect and that's okay. I wasn't really gonna go for perfection. I just wanted it to be a little bit proud of this edge and a little bit proud of this edge. Now I'll glue this down. There will be, you know, some raised here and the back is perfectly flat. Let me show you that. This is a little chunky. This is like perfectly flat with each other. That'll need a little bit of wood film maybe, but um... <laughs> I added glue to the entire surface of the new corner piece, the old drawer, and the toothpicks. Then I put the new corner piece in place. To keep things level and plumb, I added squeeze clamps in different sizes to the corner, and I used parchment paper as a barrier. I put them on front and back and from top to bottom, and I left it to dry overnight. Thankfully, only one drawer needed attention on the dovetails, so I used a glue syringe and I coated as much as I possibly could. Clamped the piece together, and removed squeeze out, then I left it to dry for a few hours. I shaped the corner by hand because I didn't want to risk taking too much or not getting the right angle and curve to match the profile of the face. This took me some time but made a big difference in the final result. To finish everything off, I sanded to 220 and wiped the dust off with a very wet rag in order to raise the grain. Then I let that dry and off camera I sanded every surface with a 320 grit for a super smooth final finish. Each of the drawers had some various markings, plus most had yellowed some over time. I used my newly acquired Black & Decker mouse sander with a 240 grit and I smoothed over the base and all four sides on the inside. I love this sander for getting into corners and along smaller edges. I wiped down the dust and left them to dry. I also used a medium rad pad to start shaping the wood fill that I put over the large corner repair. I needed to tone the new corner patches, and I used acrylic paint for this. 
It dried flat and I applied a very light coat, but I didn't want it absorbing the stain all weird, so I did add a light layer of glaze. That will act as a barrier on both of the corner repairs. I left it to dry overnight and prep was done. Then the time for stain finally arrived. I used this natural cherry stain and seal from Faux FX. I started with the lightest area of the wood to give it the most chance to soak in. The stain seemed to be holding a wet edge well, so I added a first coat to the rest of the top. This probably wasn't the best idea. I went a little heavy handed, especially since I planned to wipe it back. Which I did, once the whole top was coated. Unfortunately, my pad was dry and the stain was starting to dry as well. I should know better, I live in Phoenix, the driest place on earth. Almost. I had no choice but to wet the applicator pad. Once I wiped things back, there was almost no stain left, but the color was definitely right. And I knew then that if I wanted to get a smooth and even application, I'd have to use a combo of the brush and a wet applicator pad. And I was gonna have to do multiple coats. I used the pad to apply the stain in some of the smaller areas, like the front apron and trim. It spread and wiped back the stain basically in the same motion. That made application a much quicker and smoother process. Speaking of process, by this point, I was reminding myself to trust it. The process, that is because as of coat two that you're seeing here, I figured I was only half done with the stain if I planned to get the richness and depth that I was going for. I left everything to dry overnight. Some areas were just too dark and grainy, so I used a 240 grit and lightly scuffed over just those spots. Once I wiped off the dust, I added a light coat of stain to deepen the color again and seal the deal. For the final coat, I used a damp foam brush. That way I could avoid too much streaking at the edges. I pulled the stain and wiped it back basically in the same motion again. And I repeated the application using this method across the entire dresser. Then, once again, I left it to dry overnight. In the morning, I started on the first of three coats of satin top coat. I'm using Faux FX Varnish Plus and a 2-inch purdy to apply it. This is my favorite satin top coat. It self-levels real nice and creates a super strong finish once it's fully cured. I applied each coat over three different days, leaving about a full day for dry time in between each coat. Once the top coat dried, I just had some final touches to complete this piece. I made sure to pull the tape as soon as I added the final layer of top coat. That way I could make sure that I didn't seal the tape in place with the top coat drying down. I used Howard's Feed and Wax on the raw wood, and I like to use a makeup brush to apply it. The bristles are super soft and they hold onto product but distribute it really well. Plus the handle is usually a little smaller, so it fits into smaller spaces like these areas for a drawer. Mm -hmm. 
I waited about a half hour, then wiped off the excess and buffed everything. And with hardware installed, I wrapped up the restoration of this maple dresser. If you made it this far, I just want to thank you so much for sticking through to the end. Don't forget to like the video. That actually helps me out a lot. And you can subscribe below to see more furniture restorations, furniture makeovers, and faux finishing. Next week is the Spring Fling Challenge, and it's going to be such a fun project. You definitely don't want to miss that. Hang in for the beauty shots. Thanks so much for being here and watching. Later, peeps. I'm gonna glue them in and... Okay, that seems right. Come in. Come in. Okay, you don't like it? You don't like it. This is way too long and my landscapers are here so it's gonna get loud, but we're gonna glue this up. you're gonna bite me you are wrong I'll be right back sorry dude but no mosquitoes spiders I save mosquitoes no